Hello! Welcome back to our stream. We have arrived. We are in the middle of a dark stream. This is for the True Cult, one of our alliances. Yes, dear listener. Quite possibly every song on this list is going to be some form of dark metal. The next song on our list is Bulza, Entrance by the Wolf Shook. Entranced, Oops, Missy. Excuse me. Entranced. I can't see very well with this contact. That's what happens when you're uh, British, you know? Like, um, being British is not necessarily to be recommended. Having said that, the Let's time has arrived... Let's indulge ourselves in this music. Sounds like Bulzer in Trance by the Wolf Shook. Okay, and we're off. It's actually really good. What is that? What instrument is that? Build up here is crazy. Build up here is crazy. It might get really heavy.
What do they say in this part? Okay, so that was a different sort of one. Yeah, that's a that's a heavier kind of black metal. I mean, I think I still probably black metal. I don't know what the classification is. We'll have to get it from Neil. But this one was. Uh, that's oh. he already told us. It's Polish death black metal released in 2013. It's the winner of our death metal poll. Okay, so it's a it's a death metal band with like black metal influences, Polish maybe death, subject matter, metal. whatever. But like. This song was obviously a lot more de <coughs> developed and intricate instrumentally than the song we just did. Absolutely. It had a lot more angles to it. Something I've not heard of in black metal before. It was more dynamic and it had a lot more layers to it than, than, what, was, than what was happening. Obviously, the musicianship was much, 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 much <laughs> much better um and also also the production these are two people that did this that's what someone was saying in the comment section i'm not really clear on that if that's actually true or not if it is shout out to them because that's some badassery right there yeah that it's bloody good <laughs> playing if there's only two people that's crazy yeah that, that's only well that's the thing like music today is like so different now like like I said, like back in the day, you had to have a record deal, a distribution deal, a label, a pay a, a sound engineer, yada, yada, yada. And now these people, they just <laughs> they just go in there. Apparently, this guy, um, this guy has like, there, there's only two of them that did this. I mean, right. that's that's freaking amazing. It's but crazy. They, somebody said that he got he's playing a 12 string guitar. Because oh. the main riffage, like I didn't under, I'm it like, had a sort of fuller sound to it, which I did neck, I did recognize. Yeah, like it was definitely like I'm gonna try to find what I'm talking about. See that dun 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 dun. dun. It sounded, but I'm like, that could be the keyboard synth. Or it could be like a heavily distorted whatever he was doing on guitar, but it was really, really good. I but could it not... did sound like a twelve string. My mother used to have a twelve string guitar, and it did sound a lot different than the other ones. Oh, okay, that and it did have that sort of extra sound to it that I I thought I recognized, but yeah, I, the... I could be mistaken. Yeah, well, yeah, and then you know Sean was saying it could have been a distorted bass. I'm not sure, but um, he was he was killing it. He was killing it. I, there must have been a, a keyboard in the background as well, for sure. But right. that main riff sounded like a guitar. But, I mean, the fact that uh, it, it Hermit Hermit's repeating it. He was the son of a famous uh, jazz musician. He probably learned a thing or two from him. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I mean, look, when you, when you start, you know, when I got my guitar, I was like, I'm not going to learn any theory or anything like that. I'm just going to play from my heart and all the rest of it, which is, you know, fine. Like, that's cool playing from your heart. But the more theory you know, that it, it's kind of it's 
kind of a weird analogy, but it's kind of like praying. Like the more Bible you know, the better prayer, you, the better kind of prayer you are. So like the more the more music you know, then the more music you can make from your heart that is really awesome. Right. The right. more theory you know, the more things that your heart has to play with. That's that's absolutely <laughs> like, true. I so, mean, it's like like having lots of words and knowing lots of words. You're able to to make better poetry. Yeah. Yeah, and this guy has this guy definitely makes poetry with his music. That's for freaking sure. Holy moly! Oh, were we talking about some form of a werewolf in this? Well, yeah, th yeah. I think that that's the theme with the True Cult. By the way, shout out to the True Cult, True Cult, True Cult. The True Cult is an alliance, dear listener. And if you want to be part of an alliance, they're they're running this DJ stream. And I could not say uh, DJ by the True Cult because I mean, come on, that's that's uh, you can't say that vampires and demons are DJing like that doesn't work right so we're just gonna we're just gonna say brought to you by true cult but anyway um entranced by the wolf so the first one was about vampires this one is obviously about uh werewolves or you know wolves yeah, it in seemed general as though it was like a form of a werewolf because they they didn't call it that and i don't know if that's because of locationally it's similar but different name well, it's interesting because BM fan says that this is an anti-fascist song. You're kidding me. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know if he means like that literally, as in, you know, anti-fascist would be Antifa, right? So, yes. If, if yeah. this is this is like a Antifa sort of like pledge of allegiance or whatever, but interesting. anyway, okay. His tongue conjured up fire and hearts of hope that did smolder with words as clear as the wind. Blades sprang from the ashes again. Dance. Yes. Sermon of the crooked cross, the pulpits rock with death. Chaos, chorus, deafening, sure-footed, might machine. Okay. Dance floors of human flesh. Syncopated until the end. Okay. His dagger-like eyes left you limp in their stead. Blood. Weak as a pride in your veins. Master gives your fear a face that you can hate. Iron is the solution to the problem. Slave is what you are, confirmed in unison. Aha! Uh -huh. Entranced by the wolf's hook, hypnotized by blood, condemned to the wolf's hook, accomplice in the blood. His, palm, his psalms emanate power, beset with lightning and thunder. As you slip into trance, you swear allegiance to dance. Okay, I could definitely see... Um, that this is an anti-fascist uh, song for sure. All um, right. But the, Herb is, the Hermit's Tablet responds, they've never claimed it's an anti-fascist song. Uh, okay. They might not, but I could definitely see how an anti-fascist would use it as their song. Shout out to Applejack. Um, what, what do you think of the lyrics here? Well, I suppose there could be the anti-fascist thing, but I've it's hard for me to see the song in any other light besides some sort of a mythical um, creature and what's he commanding the people to do around him. Mm -hmm. So, but at the same time, I see what you're saying. Like master gives you a fear, a face that you can hate. The, the singer of the band has a bunch of swastikas all over his arm. Though. Oh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I'm not. I'm not sure. And the other thing is, is that like one man's uh, hero is another man's terrorist or whatever. Absolutely. So there's that angle too. The lead singer is mixed race. His father is black, yet he's also covered in sunwheel tattoos. They're not an NSBM. They're not overly political either. I've played with these guys in London. Okay, so the Hermit. No, you played with them. Yeah, the Hermit. Good for you. Well, I figured that the Hermit's tablet is like in some black metal band. In, in All right. Uh, we've probably reviewed one of his songs. I think. Um, okay, so it looks like at minimum, because he says his Psalms, Sermon on the Crooked Cross right there, the yes, Sermon on the Crooked Cross, the Pope of... is Rock with Death, right? Uh, the Chaos Chorus, Definitely. Deafening, Sure-Footed Might Machine, that's a good line, man, Sure-Footed Might Machine, oh, Dance so, Floors of Human it? Flesh. I'm not really feeling like I'm understanding your... Well, you know they say might makes right? Yes. And so it's like if you talk about when you have a very strong military, they call it a military machine. You know, they just talk, you know, like Nazi Germany with the Blitzkrieg. Right. Like they were they were the killing machines, basically. So. Sure. So anytime you have a fascist state, you, you have to have the religion. A lot of people think they immediately go after religion. The fascists did not immediately go after religion. What they did was 
they tried to get the religious people to preach their to preach their version right. of the gospel or whatever. Right. And if you didn't, that's when they went after you. But there's a state church in China. So China goes, what do you mean? We haven't made Christianity illegal. There's a straight church in China. Um, and it's actually a pretty large church with a pretty large membership, but it's it's a, it's a pro-government propaganda church. Mm -hmm. So it's it's the same thing. Like all of these, these fascist government, same thing in Germany. There were Christian churches in Germany that were not persecuted at all. They just went along with the party line, said all kinds of crazy shit about Jews and all the rest of it, and basically canonized all the evil shit that Hitler was doing. So it looks to me like he's talking about religion's role in, you know, fascistic or, or autocratic or bad governments, it looks like. And, and how, you know, that, and look, it says his tongue conjured up fire. Right. In, the, in hearts of hope. That's a religious person. Right. Is that you're speaking to a congregation full of people that want some sort of hope. And then you take advantage of all that duress and transform it into something that's pro-state or pro-war, whatever oh, you want to say. That's terrible. I think the worst thing about that is that the message from the pulpit should be one of actual hope, not one of worship to the state. Well, a lot of people can't tell the difference between the two. What? So a lot of people believe, you know, that, I mean, if you think about it, if you it, it happens every presidential election is that the 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 presidential elections particularly in america are are often religious exercises so it's look the republicans have us in hell people were in trump hell and then we we demonized trump because we, we 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 attached all of these superfluities to trump oh he's this he's that he's literally hitler blah blah blah, blah. and then then we presented biden as sort of this like messianic figure who could rescue us from Trump. That's why when he was getting inaugurated, you saw that clip where the guy said that the, you know, the Washington Monument, and then the lights go out from the the guy's like, that's like Joe Biden's oh, arms. Oh yes, I saw that. It was ridiculous. Going to embrace America, right? So yes. because because they they used all of this like almost uh, quasi religious language to talk about how horrible Trump and satanic and evil Trump was. Mm -hmm. They then had to do the same thing on the other side. And it's the same thing with Obama. You know, you had the hope thing and they had like a little, I was going to say swastika, but a little, uh, you know, halo around his, um, around his head. And so there was all this, you know, messianic imagery. Right. Um, absolutely. So ridiculous. there is a, there is a sort of, um, relationship between religion and politics particularly in american politics well it's interesting because people will bring that together when they want to prove a certain point but when they don't want to then they'll say there should be separation of church and state right but yet they want to make their political leader seem as though he should be some sort of messiah yes although i don't think that they're making the connection that that's what they're doing i think it's unconscious i think i, I totally agree I, I think christianity is so embedded in our culture that when people are, are making messianic claims, people don't really understand what's being done on a on a um, on a surface level. A lot of that stuff works subliminally. Right. Right. And you know that's uh, that's a smart tactic. There it is, right there. Hope. Right. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Like, and and you know, he 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 became this giant messianic figure, and of course, he terrorized the hell out of the Middle East when he <laughs> when it was time. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, so, yeah, it's it's really, really interesting stuff. What was the line about dancing, dance floors of human flesh? Well, that's a very brilliant way of talking about how we trample people. Right? Right. So you got this giant war machine, a sure-footed right. might machine. So what is the result? Well, you have dance floors of human flesh. You're trampling these people underfoot, basically. But it's interesting they use the term dance floors because what happens is we send people off to war. They bomb the shit out of people. But we're over here partying up, having fun, yada, yada, yada. Right. So dance floors in human flesh. So right. While we're dancing, we're trampling these people underfoot, bombing the shit out of them, killing them, that type of thing. And then on top of all that, you've got the minister who's who's thumbs upping it all and and giving God's blessing. You know, I was I was a part of that whole thing, man. Like I said, like in 2003, 2004, all that propaganda, like when if you were a dude in the church at that time and you were anything related to the military, forget it. You were you were a king. 
there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of uh incongruous marriages that came about during that period when i say incongruous i mean like beautiful women like you ending up with you know dudes that were clearly out of you know not in their league but because they were in the military and the military at the time was like the pinnacle oh, of everything yes that, actually that makes so they were able sense. they were able to snack themselves a nice little honey and all they did, you know, it's not like they had a combat OMS. They were making, uh, you know, progress reports for, you know, sitting at a desk for oh for goodness. five years. But, hey, wow. he's still part of the war effort. Um, really, really good song. <laughs> sure. Really, really good song. I guess the women were taking their part, too. What do you mean? <laughs> and marrying those men. They were proud of them for going and oh, yeah, fighting course, the war. Of course. So they yeah. give them their beauty. So this is what the guy says about his uh, swastikas and all that shit. My sun wheels, my swastikas, my whatever you call it, it's an ancient symbol used basically by every culture on this planet at one time or another for more or less the same reason to express their adoration for the sun and solar power. Okay. Uh, and I, I got to I gotta let uh, Neil have a little commercial here. If you've been digging these choices, there's always room for new members in the True Cult Alliance should you get access to the Village Discord. There you go, guys. That's a nice little... Uh... All right. Join up on Patreon. Jo jo uh, <laughs> for as small as a dollar a month, you can join us and join others as they pursue good music choices for us. Vlad says, considering that the general public knows very little about the history of a pentagram or a swastika labels. You are an evil fuck because that's the modern general view for the most part. Yeah, I I, I, I see what you're saying, Vlad, but I mean, he, he obviously knows what he's doing. He's obviously doing it on purpose and uh, he wants us to talk about him and we are. Um, I, I generally, you know, whatever, it is what it is. Uh, this song is a 9.8 for me. Oh, that's exactly what I was going to give it. Really? Yes, I felt like it was very versatile. It had a lot of ex little extras to it. So, yeah. Uh, yes, 9.8 for me. 9.8. He did a really, really good job. I'm not really worried about his, you know, the designs on his body and all the rest of it. I don't care. So we decided to let him live. We would not chop off his head. Yeah, we'll, 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 uh, uh, Bath Cherie will let him, uh, will let him live for that one there you are dear listener if you are uh part of the stream stay tuned we got more songs coming if you're not part of the stream it is what it is nothing can be done we'll see you at 11 yes you missed out on all the fun yes tv out sorry out gone